Hey everybody, uh, this is Mr. Heiser, just going to read the last three chapters of Escape from Mr. Men Lemoncello's Library. Um, really excited about this. I hope you had a good time uh, with this book, and I'm excited to hear the last three chapters of this awesome book. Uh, here we go, chapter 54. 54. On the first floor, Charles was at long last video chatting with his uncle, James Willoughby III, the Librarian of Congress, who had finally shown up for the Ask an Expert call. Sorry for the delay, Charles. That's okay, Uncle Jimmy, Charles said, strained to smile and not scream. The time is now 11 a.m., announced the annoyingly placid lady in the ceiling. The game will end in one hour. Charles had to hustle. Sir, I know you're a very important, very busy man, so I just have one quick question. If I were a book on true crimes in the state of Ohio, where would you shelve me? Library of Congress classification? No, sir. Dewey Decimal. Ah, easy. 364.1. That comes after the one will, or what comes after the one will depend, of course, on how many books a library. Charles didn't stick around to hear the rest of his uncle's answer. He took off running for the closest spiral staircase up to the second floor. As he ascended the steps, two at a time, he saw Kyle Keeley and his entire entourage running down a staircase from the third floor. Charles reached the second floor balcony first. He darted around the bend, past the doors to the 500s room, the 400s. Keeley and his crew were coming up from the opposite direction, but Charles reached the door to the 300s room before them. He swiped his library card, yanked on the handle, and dashed into the room. He scanned the shelves and headed to his right. He heard Keeley under, enter the room. Glanced, glancing over his shoulder, Charles saw Keeley go left. Charles dashed up an aisle between bookcases. He read the number at the end of each row of shelves. 310, 320, 330. One of those robots with the book baskets came uh, rumbling across his path, but Charles was able to dodge it. 340, 350. Keeley's footsteps pounded up the passageway on the other side of the shelving units to the left. In the middle of the 300s room, they entered an open space with a judge's bench and a witness box. In the middle of the 300s, rooms, they, 300s room, they entered an open space with a judge's bench and witness box. I just read that. Charles was getting closer to the true crime section, but so was Kyle. Charles saw Keeley read something off of his palm. He had the whole call number. It was time to change tactics. Charles hung back and let Keeley take the lead. Kyle rushed towards a bookcase. Charles sprinted after him. Got it, Kyle shouted as he reached for a book on the shelf. But before he could completely pull it out, Charles grabbed hold of the book too. They both yanked it off the shelf. Kyle had the spine, and Charles had, a, had hold of the top. They tugged it back and forth. While they wrestled with the book, Keeley's teammates caught up to them. Careful, Kyle, cried Sierra Russell. Don't hurt the book. Charles grinned. Keeley, the sentimental sap, was listening to the silly, bookish girl and easing up on his grip, giving Charles his chance. He body-checked Keeley, slammed, uh, slammed into him with his shoulder, and sent him flying, the book tumbling. Charles snatched it off the floor. He had the book. He quickly flipped through the table of contents, saw Chapter 11 about the robbery at the Golden Leaf Bank in Alexandriaville. He knew he'd won the game. Charles used his free hand to slap an L on his forehead. Loser, he sneered at Keeley. A tiger roared, a whistle blew, and Mr. Lemoncello entered the room accompanied by Clarence, Clement, and what looked like a rare Bengal tiger. Mr. Chiltington, Charles smiled. He knew Mr. Lemoncello was about to congratulate him for defying the odds and winning the game. He had single-handedly defeated Kyle Keeley's entire team. Yes, Mr. Lemoncello. Do you remember Dr. Zinchenko's number one rule? You bet, sir. No food or drink except in the Book Nook Cafe. No, said Mr. Lemoncello, touching the tip of his nose and making a buzzer noise. Dr. Z, tell him what he should have said. Dr. Zinchenko's voice purred out of the ceiling speakers. Be gentle with each other, and most especially the library's books and exhibits. I know, says Charles. That's why I had to stop Kyle Keeley. He was ready to rip the cover off this poor book. 
Heck, sir, everybody at school knows that Kyle Keeley is a maniac. He'll do anything to win a game. And Mr. Lemoncello turned to Keeley. Is that true, Kyle? Would you actually destroy property if it stood between you and your prize? Well, well sir, Keeley was stammering. The fool didn't know how to lie. Charles quickly opened the book to chapter 11 and slipped his library card to bookmark the location. You should ask Keeley about the window he broke, sir. Mr. Lemoncello turned to face Charles again. <clears throat> the window? Yes, sir, the whole school heard about it. See, Kyle Keeley and his two brothers were playing some sort of wild scavenger hunt game, and Mr. Lemoncello pointed to the book. That's clever. You use your library card as a bookmark. Yes, sir. I do, sir. I sure do, said Charles, turning on the charm. Of course, I can't take full credit for such a clever idea. On Friday night, I saw Sierra Russell doing it, and you told Andrew Peckelman to borrow her card? Yet, uh, Charles blinked several times. I beg your pardon? You broke Dr. Zinchenko's number one rule. You were not gentle with your teammate, Andrew. In fact, you bullied him into stealing Miss Russell's library card. Which you, are, which you knew she always used as a bookmark. No, sir, I did not. Yes, Charles, you did, Mr. Lemoncello touched his right ear. In fact, Dr. Zinchenko has spent the past hours combing through security tapes, and guess what she just found? Charles heard his own voice ringing out of the ceiling speakers. Have you noticed what Sierra Russell uses for a bookmark? No. That was Andrew, said Mr. Lemoncello. This is you again. Her library card, which of course doubles as a key card for meeting room B. Find a way to borrow it. You told Andrew to steal Sierra's library card. How could you record that, said Charles. I was whispering. And I have very good microphones. You're done, Charles. Dr. Zinchenko, tell our departing guest what he has just won. Absolutely nothing, said the voice of the Russian librarian. But please, Mr. L, tell Charles the correct answer to the final pictogram. Ah, yes. Mr. Lemoncello reached into his back pocket, pulled out a 4x4 four four card, and showed it to Charles. And Charles stood there fuming. Here, I'll show you what was on there. Can you see that? Charles stood there fuming. Anyone care to help Charles out? Hmm, said Kyle. Is it six eat? You are very close, said Mr. Lemoncello. There was a pause, and then Haley laughed. Did it come after a football player? After the football player? Yeah, said Charles. So, Andrew was right all along, said Haley. The football player clue wasn't passed. It was 19. Mr. Lemoncello shifted into the game show voice. So, Haley Daly, would you care to solve the puzzle? Sure. You can walk out the way bandits crawled in in 1968. I don't get it, said Charles. 1968, said Akimi. I know, 1968. Ah, yes, said Mr. Lemoncello, the year from the mixed-up files from Mrs. Basil E. Frankweiler, won the Newbery Medal for Excellence in Children's Literature. Another clue you completely missed, Kyle, or Charles. Wow, said Miguel, and I thought Chiltingtons never lose. There's a first time for everything, said Mr. Lemoncello. Clarence, Clement, kindly escort Mr. Chiltington from the library. Bye-bye, said Akimi. There goes his big game's big, this game's biggest loser. Chapter 55. Open it, Kini said to Kyle. We only have like 40 minutes to figure out how Loblolly and the Dandy Bandits crawled into the bank back in 1968. Kyle flipped through the True Crime Ohio to the place where Charles had slipped in his bookmark. Well, said Miguel, Chapter 11, The Dandy Bandits Burrow into, burrow into the Bank Vault. Even though you should not steal, said Akimi. I'll bet they crawled in, right, said Haley. The clever thieves, Kyle read from the book, took up residence in an abandoned dress factory next door to the Gold Leaf Bank and spent weeks tunneling from its basement into the bank vault. Which, said Miguel, according to those old blueprints I found, was down where the book sorting machine is now. That explains the first clue, said Kyle. The book title was Get to Know Your Local Library. Dr. Zinchenko meant we needed to get to know this library. This also explains why she wanted us to read those Sherlock Holmes stories. The Adventures of the Red-Headed League, said Sierra, the story about robbers tunneling into a bank from the building next door. Kyle nodded. 
Dr. Zinchenko told me she had just reread it. I'll bet that's where she got the idea for this whole game. Hey, Charles. Uh, hey, Charles should have stuck with crawling through sewers like he did in that video game, joked Miguel. He might have found the Dandy Bandits tunnel before we did. Come on, you guys, said Haley. We need to be back in the basement. I'm coming with you, said Mr. Lemoncello. I just have to see how this story ends. Clutching the true crime book against his chest, Kyle led the way down to the stacks. Why are you bringing the book, asked Akimi. We'll put it in the conveyor belt thing, Kyle explained. Whatever basket the scanner sends to it, I'm guessing that's where we'll find our black square. Our shortcut out of the library. Exactly. As the team trooped down the steps to the basement, Mr. Lemoncello turned to Kyle and said, So, Mr. Keeley, did you have fun this weekend? Yeah? Good. Congratulations. Miss Hughes, it seems you have already won. Akimi sort of blushed. What do you mean? asked Kyle. In her essay, your extremely good friend wrote, and I quote, I want to see the new library so I can tell my friend Kyle Keeley how cool it is. You wrote your essay about me? Maybe, mumbled Akimi. Wow, said Kyle. No one's ever done that before. Well, no one's ever going to do it again if you blow your chance at winning this thing. So can we uh, please stop yakking and find our way out of here? Works for me. Warning, said the calm voice in the ceiling speakers. This game will term terminate in 30 minutes. Everybody moved a little faster. Fortunately, when the group reached the basement, the floor-to-ceiling bookshelves didn't start sliding into another maze formation. The automatic book sorter is straight up this path near the far wall, said Kyle. They made it to the conveyor belt. From what I remember from, this, from the old blueprint, said Miguel, the vault was right here in the same spot as this machine. Okay, you guys, said Kyle. Whatever robo-basket this ends up in is probably sitting right on the top of the entrance tunnel. Here goes everything, said Kyle. Whatever robo-basket in this book ends up in is probably sitting right on top of the entrance to this tunnel. Here goes everything, Kyle placed True Crime Ohio into the array of crisscrossing beams. Nothing happened. What's going on, cried Miguel. Why isn't it working? Maybe this book isn't heavy enough, Kyle pushed down the cover of the book a bit. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um... Still nothing. They stared, dumbfounded, at the book sitting on the immobile belt. It wouldn't... Sorry, I was writing something down. It wouldn't stop moving yesterday, muttered Haley. That's it, cried Akimi. She hurried to the wall and flipped the emergency shutoff switch back to the on position. Several, several red laser scanners sprang to life under the book drop slot. The belt started moving slowly. The single book worked its way down the line like a candy bar on a wrapping machine. When it reached the third robo-basket from the end, a set of rollers popped up and shunted the book off to the side into the waiting wire basket. The conveyor belt stopped rolling. The robo-cart rolled away. Nothing else happened. That's it? Warning, said the calm voice. This game will terminate in 20 minutes. It didn't work, said Haley. We're toast, added Akimi. Wait, said Kyle, pointing to the square tile on the floor where the robo-basket had been. It was glowing, like one of the touchscreen computers in the desks upstairs. It says, howdy, do you like fun games? Get ready. Excellent, Akimi giggled, and she and Kyle cracked up remembering the box tops from their first puzzle in the boardroom on Saturday morning. Now it says we're going to get an anagram, said Kyle. My favorite kind of cookies, said Mr. Lemoncello. Okay, everybody, said Kyle. Gather round. Get ready. Kyle, Akimi, Sierra, Miguel, and Haley, they all knelt down on the floor in a circle around the square. Mr. Lemoncello hovered behind them. Here we go, said Kyle, as game instructions scrolled across the screen. Give me 16 words made from these 16 letters in 60 seconds or less. A 60-second clock popped up in the bottom of the screen. And in four by four boggle jumble of uh, then a four by four boggle jumble of letters. Here they are. Well, I already see like Luigi Lemoncello, right? Something like that. Luigi L. Lemoncello mumbled Kyle. The sixty second clock started ticking down. Sierra shouted lemon, and a ding sounded from the speaker above. The five teammates started shouting out words: cello, eon, elm, lion, mole, leg. Oil, 
Thirty seconds left, said Mr. Ch Lemoncello. One, cell, cone, loan, glen, lime, uh, uh, mole. We, are, we already said that. Melon, that's 15, said a voice in the ceiling. Um, Ten seconds left. Anybody? Five, four, colonel, shouted Haley. The computer flash string s flashed. Congratulations and winners. Somewhere, a game show audience cheered. Firework rockets whistled through the air and several geese honked out a uh, hooray. Please stand back, said the soothing voice in the ceiling. Kyle and his teammates did as they were told. Warning, the voice continued. The game will terminate in 15 minutes. We still need to get out, you guys, said Akini. Hurry, floor, do something. The eight tiles surrounded the glowing tablet also started to glow. First yellow, then orange, then purple. Our secret square, said Akini. There was a series of clicks, and the tiles began folding up on themselves and retracting onto the floor, opening up like an origami trap door. Look, said Haley, there's steps. Mr. Lemoncello peered down the hole at the well-lit staircase and tunnel. My, my, Dr. Zinchenko has certainly cleaned things up since Mr. Loblobby, Loblobby was here. Of course he did, said Haley. So we can walk out the way bandits crawled in in 1968. Hurry, everybody, said Mr. Lemoncello. I don't want to be late for my own birthday party. Ooh, chapter 56. I see, I wanted to see how many pages there were because I'm like, I'm kind of nervous. I'm pretty sure they're going to win this thing, though. Chapter 56, last chapter. Kyle led the way up the tunnel and brought his team, plus Mr. Lemoncello, into an empty basket filled with mannequins and cardboard boxes. This must be the cellar of one of the clothing shops in Old Town, said Kyle. The fitting factory, said Haley, reading a tag on the shipping crate. It's one of my faves. And, said Sierra, back in 1968, it was the real dress factory that Leopold Loblobby and the Dandy Bandits used. There's some steps over here, said Miguel, climbing a wooden staircase, and a door. He jiggled the knob. Oh, man, it's locked. Kyle looked up at the dingy case windows about 10 feet above the cellar door. He couldn't help grinning. It reminded him of another game he'd once won. This time, he'd just have to reverse things a little. Help me drag over a couple cartons, Kyle said to Miguel. We can stack them on top of each other underneath the window. After they built a step unit out of boxes, Kyle climbed up and examined the window latch. Great, he said. Don't tell me, said Akimi. Another game? Yep. There's a combination lock, the kind with four wheels of random letters. Warning, said the voice. What, said Akimi. Dr. Zinchenko uh, put loudspeakers in his basement, too. This game will terminate in four minutes. Yo, open up the lock, Kyle, said Miguel. Hang on, it's some kind of word game. Is there a clue, asked Haley. Asked Haley. Of course, Kyle read the tiny slip of paper taped to the glass. Once you learn how to do this... You will be forever free. Hmm. Once you learn how to do this. Read? I bet. I wonder if it's read because it said it's four, word, four letters. Everyone started laughing. His, this last puzzle was ridiculously easy. Oh, maybe it was too easy. Ready, children, said Mr. Lemoncello. All together now. And they all shouted at the same time, Read! Kyle thumbed the wheels to R-E-A-D. The lock clicked and the window opened, and this time he didn't need to shatter any glass to win the game. Kyle and Mr. Lemoncello stood on top of the highest box and helped the others up and out of the basement. When Haley crawled through the window frame, someone in the crowd that had gathered around the library for the game's big finale saw her and started screaming, Look, it's Haley Daly. She's the first one out. She won with just two minutes to go. Nuh-uh, Kyle heard Haley shout in, the, in her perky cheerleader voice. I'm just one member of a super amazing team. We're all winners. Woohoo! Then when Akimi climbed through the window, the crowd chanted her name. How do you people know my name? Kyle heard her say. Dad, did you tell them? Sierra Russell was set to crawl out next. Mr. Lemoncello? Yes, Sierra. What time does the library open tomorrow? For you, Sierra, 9 a.m. Smiling, she stepped, in, stepped into their hands and climbed out the window. Kyle felt bad when Sierra stood up on the sidewalk. Who was out there to cheer for her? But when, she, but when he heard Haley shout, Hey, you guys, you got to meet our new amazing friend, Sierra Russell. She's so smart she could tell you who wrote the phone book. 
The crowd went crazy. Sierra, Sierra, Sierra. Okay, said Kyle, you're next, Miguel. And Miguel said, Mr. Lemoncello, if your summer schedule permits, I'd love for you to head up my team of Lemoncello library aides. Thank you, sir. It would be an honor. And please invite Mr. Peckelman to join you. But Andrew thinks this library is stupid. All the more reason for him to spend time getting to know us a little better. Now, off you go. They gave Miguel a boost up and out the window. The chanting outside grew even lighter, louder. Miguel! 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 You guys, Miguel shouted, this library is like a good book. You just got to check it out. That's a good one. The crowd laughed and Kyle groaned. Oh, Kyle groaned. I thought that was a good one, Kyle. You're next, Mr. Keeley, said Mr. Lemoncello. Okay, can I ask one last question? Certainly, and I hope it won't be the last. Are you really going to put up, put us, put all of us in your television commercials? Oh, yes. You'll be quite famous. Cool. Indeed. Who knew spending time in your local library could be such a rewarding experience? And Kyle smiled. You did, Mr. Lemoncello. And now you do too. Kyle put his foot in Mr. Lemoncello's hands and grabbed hold of the window frame. See you at the birthday party, sir. Oh, yes. And you know what, Kyle? What? Here's the last words of the book. There might be balloons. What a good ending to that book. That is awesome. Um, there's an author's note at the very end of this book that I want to read to you. It says, author's note, is the game really over? Maybe not. There's one more puzzle in the book that wasn't in the story, although a clue about how to find it was. If you figure out the solution, let me know and send an email to the author at chrisgrabenstein.com. Ooh. So the email is author at chrisgrabenstein.com. Can you see it? So it'd start with author. Hmm. I did not see the clue, but maybe you did. All right. Have a wonderful, wonderful uh, night tonight. I hope that you had a great time. I had an awesome time reading this book with you guys. And um, we will see you tomorrow. Go Pirates.